the Western Arthur's Traverse in Tassie, Australia. From lush to grand, bad weather, and Tassie's got a lot of that. Everything about the Western Arthur's will challenge you and excite you as a hiker. From wildlife to mud to the sweeping views, every step is worth it. Would I do it again? Watch more to find out. All right, time to register. <laughs> yeah, there's a logbook. Please write your trip intentions. This will help searchers find you if someone reports you're overdue or missing. Oh, golly gosh. All right. When did you finish and what did you actually do? <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's this interesting sign here where the logbook is. And um, as you can see, uh, we're in for lots of fun today. It says we should be prepared for knee to waist deep mud. Uh, walk through the mud, not around the mud. Well, that's because, of, you know, we don't want to cause more erosion. But, um, wow. Okay, so it says that we need shoes. That's a really good tip. And well, we're cruising along the Port Davy track this morning. Like all tracks that are close to the car park, um, you know, they, they start good. <laughs> <laughs> I think your glasses need windscreen wipers. Come on. We've got our water. I know, look at that. We were meant to be climbing there today, but we didn't really get that far. Those clouds. We decided that with those coming that we'd call it a day and just camp here and hope that tomorrow's a little bit better. Rise and shine. <laughs> oh, wow. Looking good. Um, well, there's ice on uh, quite a few things out here. Um, not too bad. <clears throat> My little, uh, trench, I don't know if you can see that, worked. It rained a little bit last night and my trench has diverted the water away from the tent. Mmm, <clears throat> wet boots with frozen ice inside. Can't wait to put those on. Oh, delicious. Oh, halfway up the hill. There's that track we came in on yesterday. No, that is not a river. That is the walking track. It's great to report that on the climb up Alpha Marine, there's actually heaps of really good shelter caves that you could be in, or at least sit out a storm. Uh, we've seen three really good ones now. Uh, so if you were doing this in the reverse direction or you chanced it in the afternoon, you would be able to stop, you wouldn't be trapped, which is why we didn't start yesterday. We were actually really worried about shelter, but turns out we needn't be. We could have actually pulled it off. Uh, trail's getting a little bit more scraggly and grown over, but it's still pretty easy to see. I would um, compare it to Bungonia or climbing the castle for those of you that have been on our tours. Um, still haven't had to use my compass barely looked at the map at all except for are we there yet type of distances so <laughs> we're at the top of the never ending hill <laughs> yay uh, that went for a long time
Lake Fortuna, which will bypass. It's got to be the prettiest track I've walked on in a long time at this point. Look how lush this is. So here's Lake Cygnus and we were rather uh, pleased that we weren't going to be descending the whole way into Cygnus since we're making it to Oberon today or we're trying to. And then as you come down you look over and you start to see that you have to climb up all of that again. And it's not a fabulous feeling, <laughs> but one foot in front of the other will get us there. It's, it's sunny today, so sunny means we have to make while it shines. And we found a beautiful little spot, almost tap-like. And the color of the water is pristine, much cleaner than the lakes. When you get your water up real high, there's very little to contaminate it. Beautiful. Only, only taste a little bit. How's it taste? Dirty? Magic. Magic? Fantastic. To be fair, it's perfect weather today. If, if you were doing this in bad weather, that would take the difficulty level like four times it by five. True. But we're doing this in really nice weather. Not a drop of rain today. Yeah. So. We're running a little bit late today. Can you imagine why? It's because it's so damn beautiful that um, it just demands that you stop and take a rest. I checked the weather forecast only a few hours ago and it says 0% chance of rain. But uh, that looks really concerning and that's the direction we're walking in. We've only got 1.6 kilometers to go to get to Lake Oberon and that sounds like a folly but the conditions aren't it's not it's not the bay run or anything right it's, <laughs> it's um in places it's really good and then in other places it's a little bit testing the mud just can't escape the mud can you wow that's pretty. Square Lake is pretty special. It's very nice. Well, we made it from Square Lake and now Lake Oberon. I smashed my phone trying to take a photo of the important Lake Oberon. So I'm <laughs> currently less than impressed with Lake Oberon. No injuries in the car park of Lake Oberon. I have to smash my phone in the car park of Lake Oberon. Unfortunately, these rocks aren't too slippery. They are a little bit, though. It seems like a very long way down when we have very little daylight left. I'm sure we're not the first idiots to be in this situation. Anyway, we have head torches and we just take our time and get it done. Sure is a steep climb down. Honey? I just said it's a steep climb down. Oh, it's terrifying actually. Um, 
It's hard to get scale of it on camera, but. It's like a vertical, excuse my language, but it's vertical. Pretty much vertical, yeah. Well, we just got down what was probably not a great idea to do that after nine hours of walking and tired. Yeah, if you're tired, if it's the end of the day, just camp at Square Lake because that's actually incredibly difficult. It's very wet. It's very hard to see what you're doing. End of the day, but then you get to the bottom and there's a boardwalk. Cool, sweet. And then there's more stuff after the boardwalk, I'm sure, but gosh, isn't that boardwalk looking good now? <laughs> You know, sometimes you look down and you think you're never going to get to the bottom or you're never going to get to the top. But eventually, one step after the other, you do. Well, it's uh, 6.30 p.m. and we have about five minutes of daylight left. But we are at the bottom of Lake Oberon. Hey, Carl, I booked us a private room. Good morning from Lake Oberon. We came in here in the dark last night, so we um, we knew where we were sleeping was pretty. This is the first platform I actually found last night, and I'm actually really glad because it's got lots of sun on it, and so the floorboards aren't that slippery because they are actually very slippery. And look, we've got beautiful sun. Ah, ha, ha, ha. The sun is coming today and flirting with us, and then disappearing and raining. And so the platform, as you can see, you can't put pegs in that. Not that it matters, we've got a freestanding tent. This freestanding nature hike tent's done more than 100 nights in the bush in severe weather and is still standing. So again, not sponsored. Yeah, survived a hailstorm. But this 16 hour hailstorm, it's gone through everything, man. And it's still, still keeping us dry. So what we've done is in some places we've put some rocks, in other places I've just used carabiners on the vegetation, just gently. Um, I've got my hiking stick with a rock on it. Um, my favourite is some broken sticks that were on the ground, wedged in with a rock on top. And now we've just got our little day pack that we're going to go do some side trips from here today because the weather, we're a little bit unsure, we want to get up high, check the weather forecast, but we decided to have a, a lay-by day with some side trips. So, there, we did that in the dark last night, and at the time, you know, we, we'd done 10 hours on the track, so we were a bit terrified. I think if we were doing that this morning at 10am or whatever, we, we would have been feeling fine. We're about to go up it again anyway. Oh. I brought my swimmers. I did bring them. I, I, I did bring my swimmers. Now, I like cold swimming, but I'm in a huge calorie deficit already, and I'm actually feeling really cold. We had double breakfast and double dinner, but until I get some more calories sitting in my muscles, I don't think it's safe for me to swim in that. Um, I, uh, I need to consciously pack those calories in today. Oh, tazzy weather. Oh, well this is why you don't wear snow spikes, I guess up here. These are all good gator trippers, snow spike, crampon trippers. And Carl actually had a mad stack on them yesterday. Ooh, the inconsistency is a little bit frustrating because we're trying to plan around what our average kilometers are, but then you reach stretches where you can do a kilometer in 10 minutes, or, and then you reach other sections where 200 meters might take you half an hour. Let's see, it's Without the benefit of foresight, it's actually really difficult to plan our times out. And the Chapman book so far is proving to be hard to trust. I guess he wrote it a long time ago when the track maintenance was a bit better. Um, that's why I'm trying to make as much detailed videos as possible for you guys so that 
you can actually take notes, download the video, and keep it with you on your phone, so that if you do this, you can refer to my notes. And hopefully that will help you have a much more efficient trip than we're having. Although, I mean, it took us a day and a half to get here, but a very long day. But we could have done that better if we'd known what we know now about where are some more suitable emergency camp stops and where we can get reliable water. And there's nothing heavier than an empty water bottle. Look, <laughs> our friend. The little paw prints are so tiny. That's my pinky finger size, smaller. But I haven't seen him yet. It just started raining now. That's really perfect, thanks for the gods. Um, it looks just as scary <laughs> looking up as it did looking down. Carl, should we be climbing this if it's raining again? Yeah, I think we're fine. You think everything's going to be fine. But we won't have any view. Yeah, true. But, I mean, it looks like it's moving pretty quickly. Um, I mean, it was wet. Well, yesterday anyway, regardless of the, whether it was raining, it's obviously a gully. Yeah. Alright, well let's just give it a shot. So yeah, that's like nearly vertical. It's actually hard to explain, but there's Carl. And um, it's actually much easier this morning, even though it's raining, because we don't have big ass packs on. And we're going up. But also, we can see what we're doing. We're in the dark last night. If you're afraid of height, I do not recommend. I'm doing this without a pack today, but I had a pack on last night doing this in the dark, and I quite nearly had a panic attack actually. And I'm tough. I woke up this morning feeling rather embarrassed about how surprised I was by this. In the daylight it's much easier because you can calculate and see what you're doing much, much more carefully. A reminder that if you're tired and you're already pushing it, it's time to call it quits probably. Just because we got down safe doesn't mean that doesn't mean that everybody would have. A little bit of snow. <laughs> ah, that's the top. It's the top up here. Blowing a gale up here. I can tell you that, uh, well, I'm going to show you the views from the top of this peak. You can see all three of the lakes, but uh, it's absolutely freezing up here. And, and we're, we're probably up here. So, if you had good weather, I recommend that you came back and give this a go because you can actually see quite a lot through the clouds when you get the chance. But, um, we're going to have some lunch now because this is, uh, not delightful. So, got the weather, that's one thing, but, uh, we're sure getting the weather as well. still stuck in the tent. Tonight's going to be our third night here at Lake Oberon. Um, the weather has just been so bad. Um, the weather has just been really dangerous. Um, we're in a really sheltered spot and 
um, it, it's really bad even here, but all of yesterday afternoon since we got back, all of last night and all of this morning, the wind has just been absolutely howling around above us and um, we know from our experience yesterday that if we attempt to get up there, you know, even in our rain pants, rain jackets, completely kitted out, it's just almost impossible to move because the, the wind is so strong. Um, I mean, when we got back here yesterday afternoon, we were, we were going to go for it today. We were going to head out towards High Moor. Um, but then the weather overnight has just been so bad and it just hasn't really improved until about the last half an hour. So then we thought we'd leave today and either we'll probably start to retreat um, but then when we reviewed the weather again that I had screenshot yesterday for Mackie weather, it looks like we're due for a very heavy whack of rain at 2pm today, and as so we decided that we risk, couldn't risk really getting caught out in that up high. So we're staying another night. Um, the weather looked clear tomorrow morning with really heavy rain from 1 or 2pm. So we're going to get up in the dark tomorrow and just try our, be our best to get as far back, unfortunately, um, as we can before that rain hits. So we'll probably get to Lake Cygnus and be able to bunker down again and then sit out the Friday afternoon storm. And then Saturday hopefully is a bit clearer and we'll have to just leg it the whole way back out. I'm really devastated. I spent months preparing and training for this trip to do the entire Western Arthurs. Physically we're not tired. I feel quite underworked. <laughs> Dolphin in a bathtub or, you know, hiker in a tent, stuck in a tent. <laughs> um, I'm sitting here with eight, eight, ten days worth of food left. We could actually sit here forever, but we're in a tiny tent. Morale's getting low. I, I'd say Carl's morale particularly is getting low. He doesn't like He's tall as well. He doesn't like sitting in the tent, but also would. It's just. He thinks it's very dangerous out there, and I, I do too. And um, I'm devastated. <laughs> Gorgeous. You can smell my pineapple. Every time I get the pineapple out, you come over to have a look. You're like, what's that delicious tropical smell? All right, well, we just got up high enough to check the weather and I was right. So the, um, the Friday afternoon storm, the system looks like it came through last night and it's a 0% chance of rain for the rest of today and 5% chance of sprinkles tomorrow. So you should get a tattoo. <laughs> Steph's always right, except I'm not. But it looks, like, um, it looks like we're out of the danger today which means I can take these goddamn rain pants off because they're actually driving me nuts um, they're very difficult to climb in um, but it is late in the day already so we do need to still achieve a lot with a tight timeline and mist and wet rocks everything's wet <laughs> okay so we've reached this chimney area Carl's getting ready to take this pack off and it's very wet it's been raining all night you through. Yes, it is quite a small hole. Is it? Yeah, Alright, see you soon. We're coming down now after Pegasus towards Lake Uranus. What's better, Uranus or Uranus? They both sound bad. So we've uh, made it over Pegasus or through it. A lot of technical tricky sections and now it's cheese time. We finally got to go hiking again. We do <laughs> not have to live at Lake Oberon for the rest of our lives. <laughs> I actually think Lake Uranus is prettier than Lake Oberon. But maybe that's just because I'm like so over Lake Oberon right now. Wow. 
one misstep here and your character's What a cracker of a day this turned out to be, huh? Wow, I can't wait to see that sunset. I think it's gonna be perfect. I just need Carl to hurry up. I think he's had enough. But we're nearly there, half a kilometer to high moor. Well, we made it to high moor, a bit out of breath. I was rushing, hurrying to get that sunset. I can tell it's gonna be a cracker. Oh. Um, everything after Capricorn to this point was easy, really. A little bit arduous because of all of the mud and the sticks. But now we're here and the views are good. We're on boardwalk. Beautiful, absolutely stunning. Epic, in a word. We made it just in time. This is why I was in a hurry. I really wanted to get this beautiful sunset. You can see everything we did today, all hidden in the clouds there now. But People say High Moor is not a very good campsite, but why not? I love my sunsets. And today we deserve one. And tomorrow, hopefully, we'll get a beautiful sunrise. I think a lot of people said it was really hard and it had us a bit nervous. And we actually, it was arduous and it was long and it was slow going, but um, it wasn't, it wasn't, we didn't feel pushed to our limits or anything in terms of technical difficulty or anything. Um, we're just happy to be out walking after nearly quitting. <laughs> so I'm so freaking glad we didn't quit because this was so within our ability level. And it wasn't even that, just the weather worked out perfect. Would I have liked to have done that in the rain? No. No, I would not have liked to have done that in the rain. Could I have done it in the rain? Yes. Yes, we could have done it in the rain. But it would have required a lot of extra time. Um, so something to keep in mind. Uh, so we got to High Moor. It's uh, we got to High Moor in s five and a half hours today from Lake Oberon. I wouldn't say we we're stepping on it. Um, so people were saying nine hours. It's probably nine hours in the rain. Um, but because of the storm this morning, we couldn't leave until lunchtime. <laughs> Super wet tent. Awesome. So we've just got into High Moor. It's got lots of good platforms. I'll show you more in the morning. But of course our tent was like mega saturated. I don't know if you can see that. Um, every single part of it is a swamp. Because we were in a huge storm this morning when we packed up. But I just took a chance on the fact that that storm was going to clear and we needed every minute. And we needed all of those time, all that time today meant we've got our sunset so we're going to set it up empty in different parts and try and dry it out before we get in there later beautiful sunny morning as forecast at high moor it's far out it is freezing um our tent has nearly blown away and been shredded several times so we're just we're just gonna have to pack it up no matter what the weather so it was meant to be fine today <laughs> it's <laughs> We're dealing with gale force wind up here. 
It's the only place that's had any shelter. We had to pack up our tent because we thought it was going to shred because the wind is so high. The wind is literally knocking us over. The tilted chasm, there's the beggary bumps in the future. We are on the dragon now, so um, luckily we're sheltered from the god awful wind. The wind has been so bad. We're really um, meandering as a result because it's so hard to move quickly when there's wind. Whoa! Carl just had a. Th what's that? Probably only the third tumble of the whole time? I didn't land on my bone. Oh, so it doesn't count. Okay. We have run out of water and. It's not a huge issue, but the water at High Moor was disgusting. It's right next to the camp platforms. Take note. It was actually really slow to filter it, and it was just gross. So um, we gave up after a while. Okay, so Carl and I have been giving each other a really good distance because um, I'd say the number one safety risk in, in these areas is dropping a rock on each other's head and the other person not being in a position to move. So we've been doing sections and then letting the other know that it's okay to come across. So we're just about to start the beggary bumps. We've had a pretty bad start this morning. About 100 km hour winds, rain, fog, you know, Tasmania. There they are. We are currently doing these beggary bumps in wind rain and I think the rain's going to turn into hill and um, we're not particularly we're happy not. with dear Tasmania please sort your weather out it's a bit it's a bit bad and we don't like it very much maybe they could start a government inquiry into the weather and do something about it <laughs> it is very beautiful except when you're in it <laughs> This is fun, isn't it, Carl? Yeah, lovely. Yeah, love, lovely. See that cloud? <laughs> See how that cloud has that? Yeah, it's got the ceiling underneath it. I reckon we're gonna get snowed on or hailed on. We found a little cave. It's not great, but it's something. But we're cold and we can't sit here forever. It's not really ideal. Careful you don't get parachuted. <laughs> A bit of sleet coming in on us and um, it's now cracking a lot of thunder over our head just as we're trapped in a ridge line where we can't really retreat out of it. So we're 900 meters from Camp Haven Lake and well you know giant lightning rods even if we sash them um, just listening to the thunder and if it gets too close we're going to have to get down and easter egg it on the ground. But it's only 2 o'clock in the afternoon. It was meant to be clear today. Oh. Alright, 
final descent before we go to camp. It's really steep. It's pelting rain. It's freezing cold. I've set this up to call it a pasta packs down. I'm going to sleep here. Um, R.I.P. Also, so windy and, and so, so rainy. Why can't we have the sun? It's over there. Or over there. This is followed us today. It's just bullshit. Alright. Yeah, your packs go. Yep, yep. All done. Tall. Tall Geronimo. <laughs> we made it to Haven Lake. It's there. Um, Mount Taurus is there. Not fun in weather like this. Not sure why we chose to be here when it's like that. <laughs> Whose idea was this? Anyway, it's like, what time is it? It's like mid-afternoon, so we're going to have second lunch slash first dinner and um, set our shelter up, get ourselves in some dry clothes. We've been pelted with ice, thunder, rain. 100, 120 kilometer hour winds, I would say. Winds that blow you off rock faces, you know, like. It's really Proof that you can do that section in bad weather, but you're not gonna have fun. Because they say you can't do it in bad weather, well, we did, but we didn't enjoy it very much. Uh, but I wouldn't say we were in grave danger, other than from exposure. Um, but I'm going to get on to that now. <sighs> Alright. Well, here is this evening's entertainment after our soup. We have dried pineapple, smoked cheese, bickies, a tiny little bit of green is left, a little, little bit. Hello. <laughs> And we can tell you that Haven Lake is not very haven-y. It's actually still very storm exposed, but we're all right. So that's the main thing. Bon appetit. It's hailing and non-stop sleep. No shelter. <sighs> well, we've been walking through hail all morning. No joke. Tapioca hail. We're really cold. We're so over the Western Arthurs, it's not funny. And we've just got to the area where we could have gone on to do the rest of them, but allegedly we're not allowed. So, what do you reckon, Carl? Should we bail? <laughs> I can taste the beer. <laughs> <laughs> we spent two days hiking in hail. We've yelled at each other today because we're so cold and we're so over it. We can't sing anything. The last two days has just been like ice and like clinging to, <laughs> clinging to the edge of existence. So we're going to head down into the swampy hell hole, but at least it will get us closer to the car. A little bit of the Western Arthurs is probably enough. We did, we're about to do A to K instead of the whole lot now because the rest of the forecast for the next week is still more rain and hail and ice. And just, there's no point. There's no point doing this when you can't see anything and you. You know, we can't even operate our stove because it's just so rainy and windy that it makes it impossible. You're not allowed to have a fire, but that's a joke anyway because it's obviously way too wet to do that. Um, and you know what? There's just better things we could be doing at this point. Been here for seven days. It's had some nice, nice times and 
when the sun shines the place is very pretty but given that it's Tasmania and the weather is just not going to change the chances of you actually coming here and having a good run with the weather is very very slim unless you live here and you can plan it properly and even then we did plan it you know we left thinking we had a three days straight sunny weather and the forecast changed on us even yesterday was meant to be sunny but it was just ice today was meant to be sunny there's pictures of sun on the weather forecast for today and there was ice falling on us instead there was a picture of a sun <laughs> So we finally woke up to a sunny morning. Um, literally every single thing we have is wet. Yesterday was arduous and exasperating. And um, we had leeches in the tent. Leeches everywhere, but no leeches on us yet. Um, I have what could best be described as chillblains on my feet, which are kept me awake all night. Um, I'll save you the video of that. Um, I can understand why back in the day people ended up chopping them off. I can't tell you how painful that is. Um, but today is sunny and <laughs> the clouds aren't too bad. We have 18 kilometers to get out of here, including crossing a swollen, flooded creek. I don't know if we videoed that last night, but we basically got here at three o'clock and Seven Mile Creek was so swollen and so raging in flood that it just would have been dangerous to cross it, but also dangerous from a hypothermia point of view. We were already so exposed and cold. We were in ice and hail all day yesterday. So this morning I've put my rain pants on, this time with no pants underneath them, and my wet socks and my wet boots. So we're going to go down and we're going to give it an attempt. And we've made sure that everything is, as usual, dry bagged in our bags. But, I mean, the last couple of days has been all pervasive wetness. Like, even if you think it's dry, it goes into your tent and you get rained on all night. And then just everything gets wet. But anyway, we're going to see if we can make it back to the car. Not sure if I can make it back to the car with my foot feeling like this. Not too bad. If we if we attempted this last night. Yeah. Yeah. Alright. All right. <laughs> Whoa. Use your poles in the in the thing, yeah. Oh. Considering the creek near where we camped last night dropped about two or three feet overnight. And this is Junction Creek. I'm glad we weren't camping here last night because we definitely would have been flooded out. <sighs> okay, so we're racing along this Junction Creek track because we're trying to get back to the car with enough time to hopefully go to a motel or something. And because I was rushing so much, I didn't even see the uh, massive adult tiger snake. He would have been oh, as thick as my arm. And thank goodness that he wasn't aggressive and he ran away instead of running at me because I've had tiger snakes chase me before. Um, but it always goes back to my old motto, which is no injuries in the car park. <laughs> you know, like we're nearly, we're nearly home safe after eight days and I pretty much just stepped on a huge tiger snake. Oh, sorry, everything's startling me now. Um, of course, the entire track is a puddle and the entire puddle is full of frogs and tiger snakes eat frogs so they are naturally going to be drawn to the big puddle track so tiger snakes don't brumate which means they don't go to sleep 
um, at over winter time. They do get slow, but it just means that you should expect them here all year if the sun's out. <laughs> I knew better, but I'm in a hurry for that beer, man. We've got a beer in the car. Um, I want to get to a motel and have a shower. So <laughs> we have a lot of reasons to hurry. Um, we're making good time though. Let's pull out this book. My dad's birthday today. I'll call him and tell him happy birthday. I'm alive, Dad. <laughs> I'm sure he'll be proud. Oh my God, it's cold. I'm not getting in. I'm still muddy. You ready? <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> 